Good evening, I call the Alton Board of Selectmen's meeting to order September 14, 2020 at 6 p.m. Please all stand for Pledge of Allegiance, a moment of silence. Mr. Holt, I'll ask you to lead us tonight again. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Until further notice, to keep our members and staff safe and to comply with the RSA 91-8 and the state of emergency and governor's orders, restriction on public gatherings, the town of Alton has moved from the in-person meetings to remote audio participation meetings. To remotely attend the meeting, audio and video, visit our website, www.alton.nh.gov on the day of the meeting for the instructions or telephone the Selectman's Office, 603-875-2113 or 603-875-0229. There continues to be no public input at this time. You know, I'm if I get as tonight working on the budgets again for the meeting purpose, and number three would be other business as deemed necessary. And if you gentlemen would make a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion made. And who second that? Paul Rochelle second. I'll pull the board. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Rochelle? Yes. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wentworth? Yes. Vote is in the affirmative. So we'll start with budget presentations. Building Department 4192. Mr. Devers is here to join us tonight. Thank you. Good evening, John. It's been a while since I've seen you. I hope things are all well with you. I know they're busy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Stay the least. And I know things are crazy for you in your field. So I'll let you start by highlighting anything in your department that you'd like. Essentially, I made no changes to the budget other than salary. Mm -hmm. Salary line is the only thing that I modified. Did a lot of work last year, so I kept it fairly simple. Some of the expenses obviously are, are pretty low, um, like lab fees, that's generally for testing, water testing for the beaches. Uh, let me ask you something. State mandates that? That's part of the, it is part of our pro, the pro, program where they're monitoring the beaches. Yes. And they don't pay us to do it? They don't pay us to do it, we pay them. If you remember last year, we got notice that the public swim docks um, was, did not have to be tested as much. They weren't a concern, and the public beach had to, but not as much as usual. If I remember the letter correctly, John. State right. water. Yes. Well, they, they, could, they would still do it consistently, but we didn't, uh, because of the overall quality of the results of the swim dock, it wasn't. I just wasn't being this state body of water. But it's our beaches, which are town owned, which we allow public swimming. I believe this is why they. Do not pay for it, Verge. And everything else is holding off on spending money. I just have one question, Mr. Kim. Yes, sir. Uh, on the uh, 208. Uh, boat expenses. How does that work? You know, I read the backup. Necessary. Uh, right. For some reason, I generally take the police boat, and I take that by myself. Right. Because I have my license, and, and that's how that's. So I use the boat, the police boat, and I put fuel in that. Manpower would be if the police boat wasn't available and I had to go out there, the only other boat is the fire boat. And I would have to use firefighters to run the boat. I'm not, I'm, that's not a boat I'm going to run by myself. So, so if that takes place, we reimburse the fire department? For the hours, yes. Okay. Yeah, you have to pay the. Yep. Yeah. 
I got a question for you on uh, 029, benefit buyout. Now, we would put that in even on the first year that she comes in? I, on the first year on the... He or she? Yeah, yeah. Secretary, right? yeah really. We're planning to find the new secretary, yes. That's he, why I'm asking. He or she? He or she. Okay, yeah. thank you. Gender neutral. Okay, well, I'll hand it off to Laura. Yeah. Yeah. Is um, that in right on the first year? Will you still be budgeting right now for your current secretary? Kind of half to right now. That's full staff. Okay, that's the only question I got on it. John, the only thing I didn't see or as I've seen on the departments, anything for PPE in their budget, or do you have enough room in your budget that you can buy PPE? Could buy uh, ask and stuff. I, there is money where I could get it. I have, we have, I have a few stockpiles. Okay, just want to know because other other departments have put it in for it. That's why. Right. Uh, I have not been distributing it out whenever we need it, but I do have some stockpiles. So. Mm -hmm. One thing we did to propose to uh, the CIP to add uh, preparations for the student. Both trucks to the CIP, looking at a 10 year plan or so, be able to put some way to have it available. Yes, sir. John, on the um on 214, the 965 for the vehicle fuel, it, it, that's an increase, obviously, because this year has just been more. Well, it was for 2020, it was at 965, mm -hmm. and I left it at that for the upcoming year. Okay. No, I do see that. Okay. Yep. Yeah, he's right on line. He's right on line with it. Yep. Yeah. So, like you said, basically the increase, roughly 4% of, uh, of everything, is most of it is due to the fact of the uh, increase in. Salaries. Yes. Well, things keep going the way they are. My revenues will probably be pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, ruin can tell you if things are going to slow down. But so far, there's, there's going to be a bus sooner or later. I can't keep going like this. We're at 32 houses for the year already. 32? 32. Yep. Uh, you can add one more to it. But Got three today. Sorry. You did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting ready. Yeah, yeah, I know you're going quite a bit. So, boy, quite a change from having about five to ten per year. But it's good. Requirement. Gentlemen, any other questions for Mr. Devers? No, oh, sir. Thank you. Mr. Devers, thank you for the job well done, completed, and everything you've been through this year with your department. We really do appreciate everything you've done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Well, let's hope that 2021 might turn around, but right now until next July, it doesn't look that way. For everybody. <laughs> oh, have a good evening. Thank you, sir. Thank you, you too. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks to be the fire department chief. If you'd like to join us. Is there anything you'd like to highlight in your budget that's a, such an increase from last year that um, besides what your justification sheet show us? There's nothing more than a justification sheet show. You'll see that it's a 4% increase and basically it's payroll lines and it's our dispatch line. Um, and then there's a fairly significant increase in the full-time payroll line as we had talked about before, trying to get a uh, kind of a daytime officer in starting in July. So the only question I got to ask you. Yeah. So, so that's why it's only $33,000 increase because you're only going from July forward. Yeah. So go from town meeting. If this gets approved by the, if this gets approved at town meeting, it's going to take those months to get somebody hired. Okay. You know, we're going to have to go through a process, make sure it's the right person. We don't so then the following year, we could see that increase about another 30,000. I would 
Okay. I had a question, Mr. Piano. Yes, sir. On, uh, by a dispatch. What number, sir? 114. Yep. 114. Uh, I read you back up the Lakes region. Uh, I'm not too familiar with that. How there's more than one town. Yep, they dispatch about 38 different towns. 38? Yep, 38 um, towns and ambulances. So how do they figure out what each town should pay? Do they have a formula? Yep, they use a formula that's based on evaluation for the most part. And then there's a six factor um, that involves the has 19 and just a fixed number that they use. And the formula is basically based on evaluation. So we're happy, you're happy with that formula? Um, the formula seems fair when you look at all the towns. Um, I, it, it is an expensive service, there's no question about that. Um, but the service that we get is exemplary. It's much better than, you know, there's the only other services that are in our area are police shared dispatches. And the fire department really becomes the low on the home pole. Um, I've heard some cases where fire departments have had emergencies in eight days and they've been put on hold so that they can finish the traffic stop. Um, and it's just, it's because it's police dispatch, they don't understand how to prioritize the fire stop. You know, it's nothing derogatory toward the, towards them, it's just their training. Um, they also do more than just dispatch. They come in and help set up our run cards for our mutual aid system. They come in and they help with uh, fit testing for our SCBA masks. And they, they come in and do training. So they have an entire training division that actually helps with that. Line uh, 201, new equipment. What are we buying this year? <clears throat> um, a lot of that is going to be replacing old equipment. So, as axe handles break and things like that, we end up replacing that. But we got some bigger stuff that just has to get replaced. We have a gas meter on every engine. Um, instead of <coughs> taking it all at once and replacing all of them, they're on rotation. So, you got to buy one, pretty much buy one a year. Um, as far as that goes, um, the smoke ejector fan, they've come out with some new ones that are now battery operated, the new battery technology. They take up a lot less space and they, you know, they really hammer a generator when you try to run it off a generator for a long time. In the 211, the lease, per, uh, lease purchase, we're, we're leasing one of them fire vehicles? Uh, that is the, well, we're leasing a fire truck. That's out of the apparatus. Mm -hmm. Vehicle lease purchase, the line before that. The equipment lease purchase is um, the SCBA. Guy, oh, yeah. A few years back, half of it was paid out of capital reserve, the other half was leased. Um, I believe it's this year and next year will be the last one. So 2022 will be the last one. What fire truck do we lease? Oh, the new engine four. That's 77,000 a year. Or 10 years, yeah. So I take it you're going to take your PPE out of personal protection? Um, why not 451? I didn't see you increased it. You have quite a bit left over this year, so I was just wondering where you're getting some of your PPE or did the most of that come from the state? So we got some of it from the state, um, and some of it is ambulance PPE, and some of it is fire PPE that we've had to buy this year. Um, it's the ambulance side that's really taken a hit. Um, we've used a lot of N95 masks and a lot of, you know, surgical masks and one-time use pieces. Um, the PPE that's here is not necessarily one-time use stuff. This is more or less, you know, preparing a CDA models for our actual turnout gear. Like the vests, things, things that we use on a, you know, year-round basis. Line 448. Um, employee health, is that insurance? Uh, nope, that is for uh, pre-employment physicals and continued employment physicals. So NFPA requires physicals yearly for firefighters. Doing 30 firefighters every year is very expensive. We've kind of worked in a program to get everybody done at least every three years. Your fire prevention program is starting that back up. We're trying to, the, we just don't know if we're going to get back into the schools. Pardon me? How we, who are we going to teach them? Well, 
our plan is to get back into the schools. It just depends on what happens with the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. And, um, if not, we can do some remote stuff. We've set up some like videos we can send them, uh, you know, where we talk to them. We haven't tried a Zoom thing yet because sometimes the younger kids are hard to, you know, keep focused on the TV. I love four, five, three. The fire equipment testing. Yep. You can't. We doing that every other year? Or? No, that's all yearly stuff that has to be done yearly. We have to, it, it is basically making sure this stuff works. So like our breathing air compressor, that has to be done quarterly. It has to be done four times a year to make sure that the air we're breathing is clean safe. safe. Yeah. Um, you know, the hose has to be done to make sure our hoses don't burst and things like that. So everything has to be done yearly. We don't, we don't like surprises during the emergency. That hose testing you were talking about is the same as what we talked about last yep. week. It's all in this as well. Yes. And then, you know, like when we do the hose testing, we find out we have some hose that's either out of compliance, bursting, that gets replaced out of the new equipment. Line. Any other questions for the fire chief? One, yes, sir. one here. I asked this question last year and I can't remember the answer. <laughs> uh, the uh, the bio. Line one ball. Uh, oh two nine. Benefit buyout. We uh, we don't put any money in there for. So and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe. The employee buyout is for some that has to, it's going to be retiring or leaving so they can buy out their, what's left of their time. Oh no, not really. I don't usually that's for, um, if you're not going to use your personal time, but I mean, you really only have two employees. Right. So if he knows that they're going to use them, then he would not need to budget. But like, if you know, you're not going to take your two floating and your personal, right. that was what you would budget for. But there's only two of them. So say if they, the other thing, Bob, is that say if he had four weeks vacation, but he could only take two weeks this year, he could come in and request that he gets one of those weeks, carry one week over and get paid out one week. That would come out of this line item. There's no money in that line item. So he plans on taking all his vacations and I doesn't thought, his employees. I thought a few years ago we set up where we were going to put benefit buyout into a budget. You did. Not in all these budgets. That's for when somebody retires or leaves their position altogether. There is a separate line out for that, but if somebody leaves and they have... That was my understanding of benefit buyout. That's why we started the... No, that was for more of the sick time, uh, longevity pay. Uh, what else was there that was involved in that? Um, if they all of a sudden came in and there were six weeks or eight weeks to buy out, how many hours can they carry over on vacation? I can't remember. 80. So if you had someone with that much time, such as, say, Mr. Roberts, who's been here the longest now out of any of the employees, he came in and retired, you'd have a big buyout, because I think he has quite an accumulation on the books from when the town allowed home time. Home time. It's been carried over. So that would come out of that line, out of benefit buyout, not this line. Right. This is basically just for, like, six days a year or, you know, that you're two is, yeah. I hope you would encourage them to take that. And two is this allows that salary to be left alone so you can go out and hire someone so you don't overexpend that payroll line when you hire somebody new. So if you took the chief here, the police chief or the uh, road agent and they retired and all of a sudden we didn't have that money, you hit his salary line, which would overexpend that. But that's part of that when we set up that benefit buyout. Yeah. And it is. So all about the benefit buyout. Discussed it to set up that account. It was, that was that I, I wasn't here when you folks set that up. into an account, so all benefit buyout, and then we could add twenty or fifty thousand, whatever we had to add to it to make sure it was safe. Well, unfortunately, fifty thousand dollars we add to it every year almost did shoot up just about every year because somebody gets done, such like when Paulette Wentworth got done. What was owed to her chewed into quite a bit of that fifty thousand that year. I think that only left us maybe about five thousand dollars left for the year, and that mm -hmm. that's if that's what we should have paid in front of the town meeting. And had it put in that we put another fifty or no we did next year we did we put another fifty thousand but we don't always know when someone's going to retire because they surprised on us within three months of say after town meeting so we don't know if there's enough in there or not so if you and the auditors is the one that asked us the town to do that years ago but this is for 
the folks that don't get to use all their vacation. Because remember a few years ago, the highway department workers couldn't take the vacation, so that's why they have that line out. That's how we, when we figured that, that was all supposed to be put into that. So we had one budget for benefit buyout. I, I wasn't here when they said that, Bert. I just remember reading it. That's about it. That's all. And that would be something for the selectmen to change if they wanted to ask for $100,000 every year. Because if you take every department budget, you'd have to put at least $100,000 away a year. That ain't the way we figured it. It'd have to be. It's up to the finance officer should be able to figure out who's getting close to retirement, what they need. And that's how we were figuring it. We started it with 50000 and then we we're going to add whatever we needed to it. But yes, that's retirement. But you take the chief, if he was shorthanded or such like the highway department, if they had five guys down there, got six weeks a year, we could only take two weeks, and we only allowed them to carry over one week, we'd owe them all three weeks of vacation. That would have to come out of that. So you'd have to put more than 50000 in there. You, you can't cover it just with that 50000 That's why I'm saying you'd have to ask for 100000 every year to put that money away. Well, that's what I mean. It should have been built up by that. But, but, they re, but if they did that, they'd have to go for every employee that has six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, or two weeks. They'd have to add all that money in for everybody. And that would be an astronomical amount where this is a small amount in each budget line. Different purpose. Yeah. A little bit different. It took me a couple of years to understand this when I, I first started reading about it, but I do understand I understand the value of it now versus the benefit buyout on the separate line item. I mean, we have to get it to the employees that they've got to take their vacation. They need those breaks. Highway department for quite a few years couldn't get those breaks. Now with the full crew, hopefully all those guys are using up. There should be no reason why they can't use it up now. Any other questions for the chief? <clears throat> well, Chief, thank you for keeping under the five percent. I know that was hard to do with everything going on, plus adding a position. I I do appreciate that, and I hope everything goes better for you and your department. I just want to let you know we do the community appreciates everything your folks do and what you do for us. Good old. Thank you very much. Good job. We'll let you go and have a nice evening at home. <clears throat> Uh, we only had you down for fire department. That was it. That's all the town administrator put you down for. I was wondering the same thing, but oh, well, your math might be right. Put on your 018. It's 48 hours per day times seven. Your math comes out right, but it ain't working right. Oh, an awful long day there. <clears throat> 018. 018. Oh, yeah, it should be per, per 48 hours per day. Well, it's two people, that's why it's not 24. So that's 48. It will be 24, 24 hours a day for two people. I just made it 48. 48 hours 48 48 equals hours. two people. Yeah, 48 work hours. <clears throat> Anything else, gentlemen? All right, Chief, have a lovely evening. Right. Nice seeing you. We'll see you again. Ready, sir. Thank you. you can let Mr. Mr. Roberts know he's up next. I know he's outside sitting in his truck. No, he's not. He's sitting in the hallway. Just wait patient. Keeping a six-foot distance from you. <laughs> 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 Ah, uh, it's a lovely day in the neighborhood. <laughs> Usually, smiling singing. faces, cheerful places. I know it. Let's <laughs> so gonna go and have so much fun. Man, you know, open. Welcome to our meeting, Mr. Roberts. We'd like to go over with your. Budget and highlight the highlights of the most increased spots. Sure. And, uh, go back over us and then we'll come to you with questions. Uh, let's start right off with highway full-time wages. 
quite a bit of a jump. Two parts of this is uh, adding a truck driver for a new truck next year because the additional room will be coming in. Also, uh, labor, as discussed previously with the Board of Selectmen, add those two positions and see if we can get some more work done throughout the town. Um, of course, when that changes, also the overtime changes, so that's the two down through. Uh, we get to benefit buyout. Benefit buyout is set up. We did with the recommendation of the finance officer uh, setting that number, so it does look quite high. That's a number that we give given to us and set that in place. Uh, drug testing has come up. Drug and alcohol testing is going to be double. That's a federal mandate. That's not by us. It's by them. And that's the reason that's gone up. Uh, increase in printing, uh, because we're not no longer using the town hall printer coming in the town hall and utilizing that. We've done a lot of stuff in-house, so that's part of that COVID thing. So all our forms and everything that we have to print, we print down there on our little uh, printer. So that's ink and paper and all the other happy stuff. Um, Biggest one, one of the biggest ones is going to be sand. That's because the bid's up. Almost five dollars a yard. It was quite a jump in the bid, as you can see, that was awarded last week. Uh, and we have no control over that. We kept the same amount. That has jumped considerably. <clears throat> and Also, the jump would be on the second page in line painting. That's a contract also. Go to 14159 from 11776 That's the yellow line painting as well as all the white lines, all the parking lines and all the cross points. There's a set on this prior to what it was before. The new contract says almost this work has to be done prior to June 15th. We're not waiting so long. We're doing, we're doing extra mileage. Excuse me? Doing extra mileage of lines? We're doing the entirety. Before before we only did the white lines, we didn't go into contract because the contract came in late. Right. We didn't have the contract number. So we didn't get all the stuff the year before. So getting back to the contract number, that's actually what it's supposed to be. So that does all the white lines. I mean, all the, all the parking lines, all the crosswalks, and the yellow lines of about 92,000 feet. So again, that goes back to contract. A couple of recommendations. I don't know if you want to go line by line or just a couple of recommendations that I have to you as the board to think about. They're not in here, but for you as the board, um, I would look into cold patch, which would be changing. It's pothole repair is what it's listed for. You'll see in the CIPs, we're requesting a hot box. It's a three ton hot box. Some of the stuff we can get a hot top, keep it on site for winter use, and break it up into cubes and be able to put it in this hot box and be able to use hot top rather than cold batch that doesn't stay. Uh, the hot box is a, just another plus a piece of equipment, a very expensive piece of equipment, but what you get for end results, you're not back there every two weeks patching the same hole back in. You put hot top in it, it should stay pretty good. And plus you can leave it down there and just throw it back in the hot box too. Right, and you can put stuff back in the hot box. Uh, this one has we, we put it up for basically the bells and whistles. Uh, it has overnight heating, so it stays in. So you get hot top the day before, you come back and plug it in. It has the electrical heating unit underneath. When we take it out, if it's diesel fired, it's liquid heated. There's a liquid shell around it, keeps it heated, good form of heat. It also has a uh, hydraulic doors in the back, so you don't play with the jamming portion of it. It has a dump body on it, a little dump body that brings it up so it comes to the thing. Nobody's crawling up inside that hot box to grab anything. Um, it can come with a sprayer. There's a couple of different options. When we get to that point and bid it out, that'd be up to the board of select and where they'd like to go with that. You can actually put a tap coat sprayer on it. He said that's back and forth. Some people just put a five gallon bucket of tap coat. It's messy. It's going to look pretty when it gets here, and then it's going to look black after a while. I mean, it's just it's what it is. Um, it also comes with a, uh, there's a new compactor that's in the budget itself, but uh, <coughs> uh, a compactor directly for one of So 
helps put it in place, pack it down. We don't roll it into the tires anymore. We roll it into the big compact. Thought our leases went down. Excuse me? Thought our leases went down. Want us to talk, we'll, talk, we'll get to that. Um, let me just go down a little bit further. Um, Can I ask you a question on that hot box? Yeah. What's the ball pack figure? What are you talking? Um, 40 actually, in a CIP report. I don't have it. It's one. up there. It's 40, 45,000. Oh, yeah, I think it's one of the spec sheets you showed me okay. on. Okay. Okay. Well, oh, I'm, I'm just from me. Uh, Familiar with the first ones that came out. Some of the problems ago, and then I'll, I'll tell you, there's nothing like. It. Yeah, because some of the problems we're, we're repairing potholes constantly, yeah. and it doesn't stay. No, no, it doesn't. Forty-nine thousand one twenty. Full access. Forty-nine thousand one twenty. That's the ballpark figure for you. Yeah, they've come a long way. Yeah, but, uh, I, but you can. You should be in your seat. It's, it's quite a machine, you know, and we can talk about that one time, it's dual wheel, it's, uh, you know, a couple of guys running this thing can get a lot done. And I think you're, you're going to end up with a lot better. It's going to save us money overall. A lot better. And that little bit of asphalt that comes out, they put that off to the side, and the one time at night they throw it back in, that will actually reclaim itself to a certain degree. They can only do it so long because it, it, it loses stuff. Right. It loses, but if they add it with some other stuff that's already in there, it can mix. Um, also, uh, for you to look at, you know, catch basin cleaning, you're going to have to think, you know, all the construction jobs we've been putting on, this year we're going to put in 35 more catch basins. You know, um, one of the benefits is, is what Josh is doing now with the GIS system. There's a thing in GIS, we can reduce what we do by actually along the line, once the GIS is in, all these all these catch basins will be numbered, and every year we'll take down how much sediment's coming out of it. You're only taking six inches of sediment out of a three foot sump, and you want to do it every two years, or you want to do it every three years. We're not at that point. We just go from one to the other, and the other to the other. And we're trying to get some type of records to be able to enter it when the GIS comes in. And that's, that's the benefit to that. So, do you add more to the catch basin cleaning? We probably ended up with about two thirds of them done this year. So, we're not getting more. And we just changed catch basin people too. So whether that's good or bad, we don't know yet. Um, roadside mowing, you know, everybody's going to come up with that. We're doing about a little more than a quarter a year. The gentleman's doing it as a contract, does a fabulous job. The guy we had before left a lot of stuff going on the side of the road and chewed up and was bad. This guy actually cares, backs up, cleans things up as he goes. He's doing a great job, but again, he's you can't go, I don't think you can go four years before you have another piece of road. You're going to have to, somewhere along the line, start thinking about increasing that so you can get at least half of it done one year, half of it next year. I didn't increase it here. It's going to be entirely up to, you know, after looking at all the numbers, whether or not we're going to do that. Um, new lease purchase. Why the numbers didn't change? The reason the numbers didn't change is not negotiated. If you take any amount of money out of it, it's level funded at that point right now. But next year, when you negotiate that lease purchase and how you want to do it, then you change the number for the following. Right now, I think it's going to be between 51 and 57,000. There's actually some justification that is in back of this that shows we had the a estimate. little bit of what it, what it is. We think that's what it is. It's just a quote. It's not a bid. So you don't know, should you change that or shouldn't you change it? I don't know if you do that in the first year. You know, uh, that, that would be kind of tough. That's the reason I didn't change it. Um, so that's about, I think, all the notes that I had. Well, Ken, I guess my first one for you, reading your line, I, maybe I'm missing the words. Are you looking to add a driver and a laborer? Yes. Reason for both? Driver increases because what you're going to see, and I'm surprised they're not before you yet. I know the roads, and you told me about that. That I understand. The labor, I'm not quite understanding. The labor is, you know, it depends. It depends where the board goes. The board hasn't really given a big indication. Are you going to a public works director? You're not going to a public works director. The good thing about a public works director is, and I'm not talking for it or against it, but he is the resource that can say, we did it this year. You saw it done. 
we took two people plus myself from highway. We took two people from parks and recs. We took Jim from the cemetery. We took two volunteers and we went in and we hit the cemeteries from one end to the other and straight up stone. That's what a public works director can do officially. What I did was kind of unofficial. But we got it done because that's what you gentlemen wanted to see done. And I'm happy to get it done. But that's what you have to do. You have to draw from the resources. I know Kelly had put in for one and I talked about that when it was discussed here. I think one should be there, one should be with highway. And then we figure out what they're going to do. They might be a special project someplace. I can think of one sitting in the bay. Hey. A beautiful sidewalk job that will take a good amount of time just to lay new stone and pull it all out, put you know, replace what it is, reset what it is, and only doing 20 or 30 feet at a time so you're not destroying the whole body. Mm -hmm. So when you ask for labor, you're going to require, though, a license, commercial license along with that labor? Not that commercial licenses for the one that's out the bid rate and the one that's out for advertisement now that we really haven't got anybody good is uh, the assistant mechanic which didn't have a CDL before we we're asking for a CDL with that also we're asking for a CDL of course from the truck truck we haven't looked at that but that could be up to the board if they'd like to see a CDL slash labor everyone that's advertised now I put CDL slash labor on it the only reason I do that is it pays this truck driver. But you know, I do labor work too. But yeah, you gotta do labor work. That's the general thing. And if you ever see these guys, you know, they're in the dishes digging with their hands. Oh, I understand that. I'm, I'm just asking, I'm just surprised that you wouldn't ask for it because yeah, they should need them to drive or something. Well, they can still drive pickups and <laughs> pickups and one times, yes. Small, and then the CDL drivers can back off and get just big trucks. Uh, we've done that before. We did that with the assistant mechanic that was here. We drove one of the smaller trucks when we were in into a fine. We had an open file truck, get it in that file. Then that individual went into a CDL truck. So it, it's that management portion of it is moving it around. Uh, but if, if you'd like to require it, we just have to change the pay rates on it. That's the general laboring position is 15 something. I think is the, is the labor position. The truck driver is more. The, the truck driving I understand is that the roads come in the way I suppose they are because I keep getting hit questions on the one up on Alt Mountain saying why is it come before the board of selectmen yet? I said because we haven't seen anything come before us. It's done. And the other one I think is done completed with everything that we requested the engineer requested. The only one that is not complete is the third road would have been lower lane, which is off the left lane. There's still some items that have to be corrected prior to that. I mean, I'm not sure if the planning board's releasing that. That's I, I inspected all three of them with the engineer. Two of them are ready to go. I think it was more just legal and deed. Excuse me. Deed researching is what one of the gentlemen said today. It was in something to do with the deeds of Mr. Jones. So, and I said, well, if, our, if that's the case, then we won't see it until all those are done, anyways. I know they they had the right end. Uh, they have a big sum of on that's required to be put up there. We had to have the deeds around it. Of course, that, that ever got put in. It's one of the few sediment ponds that ever got put in correctly that you can actually drive around. Any other questions for Mr. Roberts? Yes. Yeah, I have one answer there. On that, uh, uh, let me see. You, you, you got a bunch of these accounts like uh, 532, Chippa. These are maintenance accounts, right? York rake, spreaders, chippers, plow equipment, steam cleaner, trailers. They're specific for that piece of equipment. So, in other words, we have to buy blades for it. We bought the spring, talking about the chipper. We bought springs for it. We bought a feed wheel, hydraulic motor for it, new uh, belts and stuff. It all has to be directly with the chipper itself. It has nothing to do with any other piece of equipment. I, you know, I understand that, but. I like to make budgets simpler. I'm used to a budget of uh, this type of a budget, and it'd be that would all be listed under one line item, which would be uh, equipment. And of course, then your your justification would list your different pieces of equipment. But uh, I'd be entirely up to the board. I'd yeah. like to set that up. And on the catch basin cleaning, I know you hit on that. Uh, have you ever thought about? 
uh, catch basin clean doing it in-house yes we have and the, the problem with some of this is first of all you probably qualify certain people on catch basin cleaner whether it's a fine shell digger or it's it's one of the big ones then you have to have manpower for it i mean right now we spend we have a sweeper two men two months sweep the entire town what do they do for the first thing in the spring i lost two guys Boom, they're gone then I lose at least two, if not three guys. They got to clean out all the sumps all the way around town from all the end of the catch basins of sand. Right now. So they're gone. This is all just part of maintenance. You know, they're gone. So what do you have key left to start spring with? They're already out more. You know? So you're losing, I'm not saying you're losing those people, but they've already got big jobs going on. And we, we're, we, we're, you should be in the stages of planning what's coming up. Road reconstruction, as soon as it crosses out of the ground, they're going. And again, whoever comes in here next, how you how you decide to set it up, they're going, they're gone. They're, you know, you've got some very qualified people that are just going and going and going. And I look at getting back to this public works director. I look at this public works director as a guy that's not on the road. He's a guy that answers the question. Matt calls up, I got a problem right here. This is what I'm looking at, blah, blah, blah. This is the answer, or I'll be right there. And we'll take a look at it and we'll figure it out. Today I ran into one. I finally got a set of plans for Lakeview Estates. They got a water thing that we gave rights to. I called you about it today. We gave them in 1986. They come out, they got a well on one side of Roberts Cove Road, it comes out, runs down the side of the road and under the road someplace. We didn't even get it in the plans in 1996. Nobody knew it existed. We still didn't know it existed. The only reason I knew it existed, me and the catch basin guy, was standing there reading the sign. It says Lakeview Estates Water Well. They're over there. The well's over here. It's got to cross the road. So we've been spending almost a month in research. I have Lisa looking at deeds, deeds or easements or anything. She can't find anything. Somehow they put a line right down the town right away on the right hand side for 300 feet and then crossed under the road. I'm glad that gentlemen and I saw what we saw because I'm getting ready to dig catch basins. They're 96 inches deep. This PVC line, I'd never find it. I knew about the electrical. I didn't realize it was a well on one side of the road that fed all those houses. But there is. So we, I've redesigned it, dropped a few catch basins out, going with rip raft in that section rather than dig it down any deep. It's supposed to be, from what I can see from the set of original plans, not the as built plans, it's supposed to be about four and a half feet deep, so you can't set up any of Can't even do it for pipe down there. Now, I don't really want to dig into a four inch main with a bunch of houses. But there's, there's one thing well, first again, thing see those are the problem. Excuse me? First thing is to see, find the easement for it. Again, everybody's looking. John's looking downstairs, see if you can find anything in the files. Everybody's looking, subdivisions are looking. We just don't know. How, when, what, where. Right. There's, there's nothing in black and white. There's nothing in my files. So, but anyway, those are the things that a public works director, he's the one that's got to do all that research and find out what that is. Sit at a desk, get on the phone, start calling everybody in your road when a problem comes up. Cemetery's got a problem going on. They call the public works director. The public works director goes over and you do this, this, and this. He comes back and applies. He's the guy that's going to sit here in front of you and show you five different budgets. Whatever you assign him to, he's the guy that's going to be presenting all the budgets. It's not going to be department heads themselves. It's going to be the public works director that's control the wall. But again, if there's something major that goes on that you as the board decide we need to take care of that and take care of it now, you tell the public works director and he draws parks and recs, grounds and maintenance, whatever it is, highway, somebody from the cemetery, and everybody goes and gets the project done. I mean, that's the way I look at a public works director being worked on. But that's entirely up to you how you've got to set up. But you've got an enormous amount of talent at the highway department. I just hope that you're able to utilize it in some way. So now that you bring that question out, I mean, your whole crew's been spreading it out that you're retiring sometime in April. Is that true? Unofficially April 9th. Officially, you should see an official vote pretty soon. Just wondering so the town could have time to go out and search to get the best candidate to fill your position so you leave your position while hands. 
Yeah, I'd like to see somebody come in a month before I leave, just so I can give them some background on a bunch of stuff. And so they, you know, not everything's perfect that we have. They have to understand that it's not perfect. But uh, I wouldn't expect it all to be perfect. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a world. <laughs> wouldn't be any fun. <laughs> wouldn't be any fun. Well, thank you. I, I do appreciate everything you've done and the budget you presented to us tonight with what you're recommending. Um, don't know if I agree with all the positions around town that are going on. When yours, your department, I can understand it, especially if the Board of Selectmen moves towards a public works department, then they would have the resources to pull from because I think certain departments would fall underneath the public works department. So, um, and I say, and I appreciate your um, telling us and informing us of everything going on. And this year, I especially enjoyed working with you, mostly out of all the years, because we got a lot accomplished this year. And your crew did an excellent job. Yeah. Uh, I still would love to have a cook out at the emergency management team would let me. <laughs> I just might have to do, I might just have to show up there one Friday afternoon. Do they allow alcohol on town property, ma'am? I, I can, can I get I a waiver? So. Can I get a waiver from the Board of Selectmen? I can tell the guys to fire up the bar with you. No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I can't say enough. You know, I've never been able, over the years and everything, to do what I did without the crew that I did. They made everything right. They learned. I mean, we have guys that can't say this enough, is that we have, we have truck drivers who get out and know how to lay pipes, set catch basins, shoot grades. Unusual. Pick it off the road and do layouts. Jack did the original layout. He's talking about one but he did he's a great operator. I said, go through Jack. You tell me what you think you need, just put little paint marks and we'll go back through it together and see how you do. You might have changed it, but really you're good. So that tells me that they've learned. Matt as an excavator operator, he can build a road. He can build a road, and very seldom I get a phone call from him saying he's got a problem. And usually it's something that we is unforeseen, ledge, something. How do we get around this or how do we work around this? He's built some fantastic roads from the day he got here to build that excavator. He's learned so much and does such a great job. Again, like I said, I can't say enough about the crew that's there today that I know. It's just you've got a mechanic that's working in triple duty trying to keep up with everything. So um, it would know how great her. Yeah, and and so it, it, that's another thing that sometimes like men have to do is <coughs> not getting any application by not consistent in or to change one or to change the other. Whether that's good or bad, but something's gonna be done because you're not gonna have that extra help and it's, it's gonna cost you more money to send things out. I know we just have a mechanic work on the boat ten dollars an hour, it's a thousand dollars. Ten hours worth of wire. Really? <laughs> We don't pay 110 miles an hour. I still believe in the old concept, you know, that I can do it in house cheaper than I can. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No matter what I pay for insurance, no matter what I pay for everything else. Well, I said this once before. An excavator and operator was costing me $165 an hour on the last emergency we had. That was an operator, an excavator. We broke our excavator down by hours. Anyway, any other questions, for Mr. Roberts, on his budget? Anything else at any time, please call. Happy to Mr. Roberts, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great. 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 Great job. That's our blessings on your crew, please. Well, have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, we're going to move on to IT department 4145. Mr. Josh will come join us, or he can sit from there and speak up a little. Go for it. He didn't hear me, did he? I don't know. I thought I was supposed to go down a lot less this year because he yeah, got everything last year. What? Favor? Oh, we just take 100,000. I went down a little, but I thought I was going to get down one more. Yeah. Went down about twenty thousand, thirty thousand, because he got his server last year and everything. Good evening, Josh. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight or every Monday night. We do appreciate it. So, if you'd like to go through and highlight your budget or anything outstanding or decreasing, that would be fabulous. Yes. So, uh, I'd like to cover a few uh, added lines. 
uh, in particular, uh, 017, the benefit buyout line, uh, as well as uh, 207 and 214. Uh, I think you, everybody is already aware of the benefit buyout and, and why that's there. Um, but the 207 and 214, I uh, just started uh, traveling in the assessing vehicle. Um, so, and that's in an effort to avoid using my car for local travel, which I've been doing for the past uh, six years. Um, so, I'm trying to uh, lessen that and then move more into uh, traveling in a town vehicle. Um, so, I've added these two lines to uh, work along along with that effort. Um, one for gasoline. This will be 500 until we get more of a feel for how much gasoline I actually use. Um, and the vehicle maintenance is 500, which I'll be sharing with the assessing department. <coughs> and the shared vehicle will share the cost of the maintenance. Um, I believe in, in the assessor's line, he has a thousand. So basically I'll just be taking 500 of that and we'll be mm -hmm. 502 to serve. Those are new, right? Yeah, so uh, we did get that big server last year with the unanticipated uh, funds from the state. Uh, this is more for desktop computers and laptop computers. Um, and then also you'll see the word server below for basic IT management servers. Basically what I'm looking for is very inexpensive servers, two of them uh, to be exact, to handle daily operations like backups, uh, and then also operations such as monitoring for antivirus, uh, important security uh, items. I've put them under the hardware PC and server line because although they have something to do with security, they're more hardware so that I can put those uh, pieces of software on them and then utilize them for that. Uh, one other thing I'd like to bring out was I, uh, it was kind of interesting, the telephone migration um, to the new system, we were paying 18000 um, as of last year under line 540. Uh, I have successfully been able to migrate almost all of the town uh, telephones to the new system. It's working great, uh, and we're going to be looking at cutting costs quite a bit. So that's why you'll see the, eight, the drop from 18,000 to 10,150. Um, I actually anticipate a drop further uh, because right now the 10,150, uh, that includes all of the telephone lines in an unlimited uh, subscription plan. So once I get a feel for how much we actually use the telephones uh, by, the, by the minute per call, I can get a better idea of how much I can shave off of that uh, on top of what I've already saved. Uh, so that was that was a big one. You got town offices on 509 down 515. The town clerk's a different system or something that ain't included in town offices. So 509 is just for uh, the town offices, excluding the town clerk's office. Um, so permitting and community development would be uh, planning and the building department applications. GAP welfare management is um, for Mary and Stacy. They use it for welfare clients. Um, and the BMSI software suite is for accounting, payroll, uh, direct deposits. Why did the highway take such a jump? It's uh, 520, I'm from 12 to 32 in two years. They get different software or something? Yes, so they have a uh, vehicle diagnostic system. It's software and hardware that hooks up to the computer. And this actually enables them Kind of like the uh, code reader on a um, vehicle, on a regular vehicle, 
uh, except for it's, it's more for like these commercial trucks. And it will actually, it will break out wiring diagrams. It will show them the next step in the process. It's the step, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's pretty comprehensive. Um, and then on top of that, yes, we did go with a, um, uh, a vehicle management system uh, that tracks all repairs, uh, depreciation of the vehicle over time, you know, whether it's worth to put the money into it or if it's, you know. Well, half the vehicles down there ain't worth it. We already get rid of them from all the other departments and ship them there. <laughs> right. It was brought up to me that it was very important to, to understand that the, uh, whether or not it's worth the money they're put into for the vehicle or, or not which a system like this would be able to, to, to do for us. And they're actively using it, they're doing a great job with it. The service toll. <clears throat> uh, 113, training. Yes. Uh, I noticed well, you had 3,200. You haven't spent any this year. You're asking for 1,007. I see the backup. Will you be using it? Uh, yes. Between my plan is to go between encumbering some of that, uh, which is why there's a decrease uh, for next year. Um, but then on top of that, also uh, pursuing some certifications that are IT related. Yeah. You're the third person I've heard says they're going to encumber something out of a budget. Only people that are incumbent is us. He's going to request to encumber. Yeah. Request to encumber, yeah. Sorry. To, to the town administrator and town administrator to us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, He's the third one that said it. I'm going, who are all these people incumbent with funds here? That's the plan. Okay. Uh, you know, I have no problem with training the town. As a matter of fact, I like them. I just like them to be used, though. Yeah, oh, this year it was this year it would have been hard for anybody to do yeah, training during right. COVID. So you know, COVID, especially with computers because they <clears throat> change so fast. Yes, and I actually I can just say certification is the way to go with that uh, because basically the certification expires, which basically keeps you it's every three years, but it keeps you current, and it's less expensive than pretty much any other way to go. I had one other question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, 511, software fire. Is that something we haven't paid yet? So that's been paid. That's it has. Yep. Um, and this has a slight increase um, because the, the fire department had actually consulted with me on this. They had moved their program to a, a new system. Uh, that is a, a whole lot more comprehensive than the old system that we were working on. So the slight increase is well worth what they're getting out of the new platform. Well, according to this, you've got the same amount, 3195 <laughs> Was that on the 9-1 budget expense? It, oh, yeah, well, uh, 2020, Five oh four, four one four five. Five eleven. Five eleven. Sorry. Four one four five. And what's the fire department? Yeah. But according to the but according to this of the August readout, it hasn't been paid. I guess it's not. just been paid. Yeah, so I believe the fire department took the step to move forward with that. Um, and, and that was early this year. Any other questions for Josh? I think it's a good job. Thank you. Looks pretty good. Yep. Anything else you like that, Josh, before we let you go? Well, go back to your seat anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that sounded pretty bad, didn't it? Go back to your seat. <laughs> Not quite, yeah. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate it. No Thank you for everything you've done this summer, too, for us coming to every meeting. I know you could be at home with your wife and everything, and we do appreciate you staying with us every night. And the other, also the other meetings you've had to attend. All right, gentlemen, and for that, we'll move on to audio and visual okay. media equipment 4199. Level funded. 
Yes. This is for the equipment that tapes the meeting, towards the meetings and stuff like this. And now he's going to hit us with a whammy because he wants more money. <laughs> a special note from the town administrator. <laughs> See, he couldn't even pass the note, could you? I had to give it up. It's 3500 Oh, shame on you. <laughs> Another 3500 on top of the 3500 No. Oh. No. Audio and visual meeting equipment. Pardon? That's right. Who wants to say anything? Thirty-three fifty balance remaining this year. One forty-nine. Like I said, it's for emergency equipment in case they need to get something in case something breaks or have to replace anything. Anything to do with audio and video? Is that with the screen and stuff? Myself, personally, I'd like to see you do away with this line item and put it into his computer department. Make a motion to make it. Department. Somebody brought that up last year and you recommended against it. Did I last year? You showed yeah. it was in the minutes. You got to go back and prove that to me. I trust you, but you got to verify it. <laughs> you didn't want to see it chewed away. For, for what little amount, looking at it again this year, I would see us change it because it'd be still specific to that equipment. Okay. That way, there he won't feel like the long dove if he isn't just under budget. Oh, you got all our new equipment now, it's already bought, so let's make this. Gentlemen, any questions for Josh on this one? If not, I'm willing to pass over this tonight. Okay, seeing nothing, Josh, you can come back and join us on this side of the room. Thanks, Josh. All right, gentlemen, at this point, we do have other business that's deemed necessary. Let's put it to your desk tonight. Uh, correspondence from the police chief. You folks had talked about this when I was out, I believe, with my summer cold. So I'm going to, the chief is asking that we be allowed to sell the Humvee. He's had a bid of $25,000. If I remember right, you gave him the okay to put it out there, get bids put on it, and to sell it, and get received bids to sell it. I believe the chief is there. He didn't come in tonight, I take it. Um, he did not. I'm not sure he's here remotely, but <clears throat> if I may speak, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Selectman Holt had a question earlier about if there was a minimum bid that was set. There was not. Um, Ryan, uh, the chief advises we did not set a minimum bid. We put it out there for a 35000 or best offer to see what we could get for responses and just noted in the caption that we would accept all reasonable bids and the highest would be presented to the governing board for final approval. Um, yeah, and, and this was on Munisi bid. This was on what bid? It's, he says here, this is the listing on Munisi bid. Mm -hmm. It says here eBay. Yeah. <clears throat> and Munici bid and Facebook. Oh yeah, it does say that. Yes, marketplace eBay oh, and Munici bid. Yes, it does. Facebook. Yeah, I know we we talked about a figure, but we didn't put a. Did Did he have an idea of approximately how many people bid on it? It just says there were many offers. <clears throat> I'll ask him. Just out of curiosity. If he doesn't answer me right away, I'll email it out to everybody. It's, not a big deal. it's really not a big deal. Because usually those bids, they'll start at 100 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. So there, there, it just says yeah. we receive many offers. But the highest. So the question I have for you, Donna Minister, yeah. if he sells this piece of equipment, does that money go to the general fund or can it go back into his revolving fund? That's the way I'm looking at this. A memo from him, he feels that it's going to be going back into his revolving fund, and then if there's any money, need extra money, he can take it out of the revolving fund to purchase a new vehicle. Some kind of a hang up on selling that. The money could only be put back into another vehicle, if I remember right. 
But the select uh, made that, that vehicle was given to us. That, that vehicle was oh, given to us some federal for. funds. You paid a dollar for it. Yeah. But, 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 it but it's still a piece of town equipment. Yeah, when you go to sell it, does that have to go back to the general fund? It says revolving fund. Well, I, I, I'd like to have that clarified. Yeah, because that was a stipulation well, when, see, we, the chief can explain it to you. He, and he did at that meeting. There's a stipulation if we sell it where the money goes. Well, the stipulation is coming from him or from the federal government? By the federal government. I'd like to see it in writing. He, he has Because it. taxpayers' dollars have gone in to pay for the repairs of this. And also, I think when we did the paint job and everything, that didn't come out of the revolving fund, I don't believe. It came out of his regular operating budget. <laughs> so it is really a piece of town equipment versus being traded in. It's going to be sold outright. I'd like to hear from legal opinion, too, on this to make sure... We can do what he's requesting us to do. And if we paid a dollar for it, it makes it as legal tendered anyways. So there was something with the federal government originally, <clears throat> whereas if you accepted it as a gift you and you wanted to get rid of it in the future, mm -hmm. it had to go back to the federal government. But what he explained was that has changed now so that these people with all these, yeah. the federal government didn't want back all their old antiquated mm -hmm. pieces. So. <laughs> so they were sold, but the, the purpose of the revolving fund did not change until I think it was eight, 2018 or 2019 for all fleet, all fleet, not just for special details, but for fleet items. So originally, any work that was done on that vehicle would not have been taken out of the revolving fund. It would have been taken out of his budget. Mm -hmm. Which is taxpayers. I understand that, <clears throat> but I'm not sure <clears throat> if the money can go back into the revolving fund. I feel like it should go back to the tax. The tax base should get different. Well, that's what she's saying. Yeah. She's saying basically she thinks it has to go back to the general fund. All I want to know is for sure, because if, if the chief just thinks the 25000 can be used towards the purchase of a new vehicle once he sells this, along with whatever else is needed through the revolving fund, which would probably be enough. Or four-wheel drive pickup truck capable of hauling his emergency management trailer. It's going to at least be a 250 to 350 if it's a Ford or a $3,500 Dodge. So... I vote no on that because I, I disagree with adding more vehicles down there. Well, well the, the whole purpose of selling Humvee was to get a pickup truck, if I remember right. right. A big pickup truck. Night last year. Trailer. All the trail of the and boat everything. and everything. Um, <clears throat> I recommend that you approve this winning bidder sale and then have finance. Hold on to the twenty-five thousand until I can get some clarification from legal counsel, which will not be this week. Okay. So it's going to be a couple of weeks before I can get a, a legal determination on that. So, in order to not lose this winning bidder, which apparently was done earlier as well, <clears throat> I recommend you accept it. The transaction can happen, and then the funds can be dealt with at, in a couple of weeks. I agree to that, Mr. Chairman. I move we accept. The uh, bid of twenty-five thousand for the Humvee. I'll second. Motion made by Mr. Holt to um, accept the twenty-five thousand dollar bid for the Humvee at the police department. Second by Mr. Rochelle. My only question is that all all town equipment, radios, hardware, brackets, everything will be taken out of that thing before it's sold. Right? Does not include lights or anything else. Correct. Which was yeah. talked about before yeah. at the other meeting that he yeah. was going to. It wasn't in the motion, that's why. That was, that was um, agreed upon before when he got permission to sell yeah. the, the Humvee, that everything would be removed. Out so of I'm going to ask you, gentlemen, to rescind your second, rescind his motion, and put that in your motion, please. Like the stripped that down awesome. Humvee yeah. or something like that, yeah. or minus the equipment. Yeah. Or yeah. We accept a bid of 25000 but the vehicle only and no own, uh, town owned equipment will go with it. I'll second. Made by Mr. Holt to accept the $25,000 bid that Mr. Heath has submitted to us, second by Paul Rochelle. Any further discussion? Do we need to throw in there her holding the check until we know what we can do with it? I don't 
think so because that would be a standard procedure anyways, and that's something that I can simply direct the finance department to do is just hang <coughs> on to it until I, until you hear back from me once they check with the board. Is this going to be made out to the town of Alton anyways versus Alton Police Department's revolving fund? Yeah. Okay. Um, you're going to have to sign off on the title anyways, correct? Yeah. Or is it old enough that it doesn't have? Well, it's going to have to have some form of bill of sale. Yeah. Any further discussion? I'll poll the board. Mr. McDonald. Mr. Whitman. Yes. Mr. Lershaw. Yes. Mr. Holt. Yes. Mr. Wentworth. Yes. Vote is affirmative. Four, four, one against. Mr. McDonald. Voting nay. So, gentlemen, at this time, I don't believe there's anything the town administrator has to report. Um, we have no other further business unless Mr. McDonald has his finger up and Mr. Rochelle does. Well, I'd like to make a motion. <coughs> I just we've already done to get them over to budget committee so they <coughs> start their meetings and they need budgets to start with. Well, I'm still reviewing them, so if you want to move with that tonight, you gentlemen can. You can make a motion to do that. I'll probably vote no on every single budget. I I want to study it some more myself. Oh, wait, okay. I'd like to have the town administrator. How many more budgets we have left to do? Do you remember? <coughs> town yeah. clerk. Did you do that while I, when I was on that one meeting? Yeah, yeah. Okay. She and the election budget were done. The administration hasn't been done. You know, Water be, hasn't been done yet. Right. Um, there's a handful. The total budget committee, October 12th. Well, we could start reviewing some of them again. we got still ambulance to go, water department to go, uh, police department done. So the waste we have. So we can start re bringing these back up to vote on them yep. as long as you give us enough time so we have all our notes. And our, we're going to get the September ones. Yeah, I can. Yeah. That can be on the agenda. It can be approval of certain ones and then review of others that you haven't seen yet. We can kind of separate it on the agenda. It won't yeah. take long, but I think there's some that we need to go over. I think the highway department and parks, building and grounds will be our longest debated one. Are you fine with that, gentlemen? Yes. All right. Okay. Then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn tonight so these employees of ours can go home to their families. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion is made to adjourn by Paul, Paul Rochelle. Do I have a second? I did. Bill. Wait a second. Do I have any discussion? Hold on just a second. Please sign. Oh, I just have to sign. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll pull the board, Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Whitman. Yes. Mr. Rochelle. Yes. Mr. Holt. Yes. Mr. Wentworth, yes, folks in the affirmative. Thank you, folks, for joining us tonight. To talk. We are adjourning at 7 12. Signature file is here. Okay. How many signatures?